All right, so hey everyone. Uh, today I want to take a look at uh, two issues with the thumbstick implementation in the GameSir Nexus app. And uh, I'd also like to request an additional option um, be added to it. But uh, first off, the options available are excellent. I think that any controller that offers uh, thumbstick customization should be offering dead zone, anti dead zone, and curve options. And um, this definitely has that, plus all, all sorts of uh, different uh, curve options to uh, choose from. So that's uh, great. But uh, on to the first issue uh, is that the raw mode is not raw, it's actually fake and faked off of the circle mode. Um, a, at least the true raw mode, what that should represent is that you have your accurate uh, stick input and the circle mode uh, should just clamp your input that exceeds 100% to 100%. So you can see that here that uh, I can't exceed 100% uh, movement. But raw is faked and uh, we can see that with this UI. So if I move to 50%, and switch to raw, you can see that the input jumped to uh, 60%. The raw mode is 20% faster than the circular mode. So if any player had noticed that raw felt faster, it's because it uh, explicitly is. Now raw seems to just be, you know, uh, the circle mode just multiplied, um, you know, 120%. Or specifically, it seems to be multiplied about 10%. Uh, we'll see that with the anti-dead zone. But uh, when I first looked at um, this, it was version 2.00. Uh, and when I did the same test and moving it to uh, 50%, switching to raw, it was actually 55%. But now it's uh, 60. So uh, raw mode was... Um, only 10% uh, faster, now it's 20, but uh, we'll see the other 10% before. But also doing it the other way, we can see that if we move to 100% uh, with raw, and then switch to the circle mode, it falls to about 83, 84%. So that means that uh, uh, you're losing about 16% uh, or so of your range of motion when playing with raw. Now, that can be uh, actually useful, uh, not specifically 16%, but um, with this circular mode, it's very tightly aligned to the hole in the faceplate. So you hit 100% just a hair before, there's not much play. And that would indicate that the circularity error is naturally quite low. Um, I think that the true circularity of this is closer to about 6%. Uh, I'm not going to get into that uh, just for the sake of time. But um, that may not be enough to counter or to use it in uh, uh, games using Axial Dead Zones. So this fake version uh, might be the, their solution to that. Uh, games using Axial Dead Zones will push out diagonal thresholds. And at least with this circular implementation, uh, you won't be able to access the full um, diagonal range uh, for those games. So uh, them faking that may have been uh, the solution to that. However, with a true uh, raw input range and not uh, ca uh, clamping the values uh, to 100%, you could um, simply use the outer dead zone values to increase your error and push out the diagonal range. So you know, by default, I said that the raw range uh, lose about 16%. Uh, if you had a true raw, uh, you would be able to use the outer dead zone to fine tune this. So you may be able to set it to 90, so you're only 10% and that may be far enough for it. But let's say if you needed more and you might lose 20%, uh, but you might be able to um, output a very square shape uh, with your input.
and a true raw mode would be able to do that and not have issues uh, with it. But uh, this fake raw mode has issues with uh, both the curve and the anti-dead zone. So let's take a look, we use the very slow version of this. So we have a circular uh, trajectory right now. And if I move to um, say 20%, with this and then switch to raw you can see it jumps to about 25 26 percent and then if i jump over to a 50 percent and then switch to raw oops it jumps to 67 percent And if I move to 70, you see it jumps to 100%. So because the raw is multiplying sort of the base input, this is affecting where your input is on the position on the curve. So uh, it affects where the, the output is. So um, that's, you know, not, not great. And uh, makes uh, the curve uh, I implementation inaccurate. Uh, at least when you're using raw, or at least it's, uh, you know, because it's faster, it's, uh, it's having that effect on it. Now the anti-dead zone uh, basically tells your uh, output where to start. So if I make tiny movements, uh, this says saying that I should start at 50%, and you can see that's occurring. And the max says where it should stop. So if I move the stick fully, it should stop at 80% and it stopped at 80%. So that works perfectly fine with the uh, circular stick trajectory. With the raw, you can see that if I move slightly, this is about 55, 56%. Well, it should be 55% specifically. I'm moving the stick a little further. But if I move fully, you can see that this is 88%. So this is 10%. Um, higher than it should be, and exactly uh, what um, the circular shape is basically being multiplied by. So it's making the anti-dead zone values wrong using uh, the raw setup. Using a, or having a true and accurate uh, raw value, um, and using the outer dead zone to control this would actually uh, not have any effect on either the curve or the uh, anti-dead zone. The anti-dead zone would uh, output the correct values if uh, there was a true raw mode that you're controlling just with the uh, outer dead zone. So uh, yeah, giving us an outer dead zone uh, would correct that and stop any issues with the curve or the uh, with raw affecting the curve or anti-dead zone. So uh, that's the first issue. The second issue is that the curve affects the anti-dead zone. So you can see we have a linear curve right now, and um, we have the exact output range we want. So 50 to 80% exactly. However, when we apply a very slow curve, see that it should be starting at 50, but it's actually starting at about 18 and ending at about 46%. And the exact opposite will be true if we reverse this, where we want it to start at 50, it's actually starting about 82%, and to end at 80, but it's uh, ending at 95%. So um, this is actually a very uh, simple issue. Um, you can see that the, uh, if I go back to that, you can see that the, uh, curve display visual at the top left is accurate. It's just the stick input is, uh, the actual stick input is wrong. But the reason why the curve is affecting the anti-dead zone input and output is because when you set this up, ideally, um, the order of the setup is to apply the, the dead zone values, uh, do the dead zone calculation. That will give you a zero to 100 range. 
and then you apply the curve uh, and now apply the curve between your zero and one range and then you uh, apply the anti-dead zone and that will take that curve you have and then just shrink it and reapply it just as you see the um, visual is, is doing. However, how they're doing it is applying the dead zone, applying the anti-dead zone, and then applying the curve. But when you apply the curve at this step, your range is 50, 80, and where it is along the curve um, is basically uh, what's uh, being output. So you can see, if you take a look at the graph, 50% input, that's a horizontal value, is quite slow with the output. Um, so 50 is going to be quite slower th than it should. And all the fix is simply to uh, calculate the curve before the anti-dead zone. So that, that, uh, and that would fix it completely. Uh, so uh, that's it for the uh, two fixes. One, give us a real raw mode. Um, there should be no uh, difference between the uh, general input, between the circular range uh, and the raw input when within the circle. And when you exceed the circle, the raw mode will reflect that. And when you have the circle mode on, uh, it will clamp it like this. And then when, if you want to adjust the error of the raw mode, you can use this uh, outer dead zone value and uh, doing it this way won't have any uh, effect on the curve or the anti-dead zone values. For the curve, just apply the curve before the anti-dead zone values and this will make sure that the anti-dead zone uh, isn't affected. And of course, uh, making both those fixes, then the anti-dead zone won't be affected by either the raw input or uh, the curve. So uh, that would fix uh, the issues. Uh, the uh, option I would like to see added is an option for an anti-axial dead zone. The anti-dead zone we have here is an anti-circular dead zone. You can see if I make tiny little movements, it's making uh, circular shapes and you still have full diagonal movement. So that's an anti-circular dead zone. But axial dead zones, um, create a, are kind of cross-shaped. They have a central center square shape where no input happens. And then the arms of this cross are regions where if your stick is within them, you move in one of four directions and you only start seeing diagonal movement. When you break out of both axis dead zones. Um, and an anti-axial dead zone would allow you to counter that. So uh, you would simply skip over those regions into the diagonal region. And since there's already a um, radial uh, dead zone being applied on, on the controller end, for games that use axial dead zones, you can functionally change them into radial dead zones by using the app radial dead zone and then an anti-axial dead zone to counter the in-game dead zones. Um, that could work also with this uh, current anti-radial uh, dead zone for games that use both of them at the same time. And then you can effectively counter that uh, directly. And since you have curve customization, then you'd be able to directly uh, have the curve map appropriately to the expected ranges. Uh, on top of that, when you counter uh, axial dead zones, that offsets the uh, diagonal movement of the output. And um, if you counter the axial dead zone fully, your output will be perfectly aligned uh, with the output of the uh, uh, axial dead zone. So even if you're using this circular trajectory with uh, this clamped 100% uh, range, uh, which normally has issues with axial dead zones because you can't reach those thresholds, uh, since it's being offset, you would be able to those thresholds because it's uh, perfectly aligned with it. So you could use the circular trajectory um, without issue if you knew the uh, appropriate uh, axial dead zone to counter. 
And uh, there are countless games that use actual dead zones, so uh, having that option would uh, retroactively uh, fix uh, tons of games. Like having an anti-circular dead zone does a lot, but having uh, both those uh, fix countless more games. So uh, that's a lot of rambling, but uh, the two fixes, again, one, give us a true uh, raw mode, and then uh, apply the curve adjustment before the anti-dead zone. That fixes the issues here. And then add an option for an anti-axial dead zone. Uh, I can give uh, the code for that. Um, that includes all the fixes, as well as the anti-axial dead zone implementation on screen. Uh, this is what I've used for my anti dead zone script. And uh, the only issue with this code is I increase the anti uh, radial dead zone um, based on the anti axial dead zone and the anti sort of outer dead zone uh, because when using the latter two, the axial and the anti outer dead zone, um, that shrinks the expected value of the anti radial dead zone. And uh, this corrects it, so it, it makes the radial, anti-radial uh, larger uh, to accommodate that. However, the equation for this has the uh, one minus anti-axial. And um, if uh, the anti-axial gets to 100%, then uh, it breaks. You can't have zero in the denominator. Uh, so the only thing to do uh, would be if that option was added to, and this implementation was implemented, uh, you would have to have the uh, anti axial dead zone not be able to exceed uh, 99. There's no context where that would ever be needed, but uh, that's just something to be aware of if you copied that code directly. Anyway, uh, that's a lot of rambling, but I think these two fixes and the additional option would really uh, make this controller uh, like that much better as the options available here are already excellent. It's just uh, those two issues and additional option are perfect. But uh, thanks for watching and everyone have a great rest of your day.